start up ZBrush here. Oh, wake up. Uh, ah. All right, let's go through the old streaming topics here. And this is also on the new computer. And I haven't gotten my monitor set up completely right yet, so I, I apologize if there's any aspect ratio stuff going on that's kind of weird. We, the entertainment loving people, want to know. And if you want to see, some people are interested in this, some people aren't. I'll bring it up as it's relevant. In fact, it might be kind of interesting. Hold on just a second. I always want to check and see if I need to optimize this ZBrush for my new computer here. Preferences, performance, multi-threading optimizer. Let's see what this does. All right, we got a 9.6% improvement. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and restart the brush. We'll see how that does. Um, I have my laptop set up over here. Hey, Dynamesh 3D, thanks for showing up. I'm doing a little optimization. And I have my... I'd, Again, I haven't gotten my new monitors yet, so Blance, how's it going? So we're we're trying to see if that buys us anything here. As far as performance and speed and what else we got in here? Preferences. Performance. We got uh, uh, test multi threading multi optimizer. Hmm. I'll have to look into that. I got a lot of threads now, so we'll see how that's going. Hey, everybody, thanks for showing up. And uh, I don't have anything really in particular. Uh, let me see what I have actually on this computer. I think I, I think I copied everything over that was worthwhile. So, oh, you know what? Oh, I guess I do have the reference. Good morning, everybody. I'm going through my streaming topics right now to see if there was anything um, this is going to be my last stream for a while. I think I'm going to miss the next three. Uh, well, no, Lex 2. So I'll be back on the 26th. Uh, let's see, the, the holes and clothes, monster. Any tips? Yeah. Um, reverse perspective scene like in Grecian iconography using depth view or any other deeper settings. I think that would just be oh reverse perspective. That one I'm not sure about. That's an interesting one. All right, uh, let's see what we got here. Load this up here. Let's see where we left off on this thing. I think this thing is just about done. We can wrap this thing up here, or uh, let's do that. Texture, import, reference, and we'll go ahead and grab the laser cannon. I think this is our best one here, our best shot. And we'll go ahead and throw that, select it, throw it into our spotlight here. We'll shrink it down just a bit, drop that opacity just a bit, open up our document channel, our document menu here, and we'll just save a custom view here. And this is a kind of a hybrid. Um, Geez, we just got like one more thing to put on here, and I think we're done. Not a couple more things, maybe. So this is kind of an orthographic view, kind of a perspective view. So I'm going to stick with orthographic for now, just to make sure everything is kind of placed neatly. We'll go to custom one, and uh, in order. Oh, you know what? I do have another monitor now. Hey, what's up, guys? Um, let's check out. Let's check that out real quick, Blands. Let's see, let me go to PC here. Streaming. Just, just give me something, photos, sure. Thank you. All right. 
Um, so if we hit, can uh, go out of edit mode, hit control N to clear my canvas and then shift Z to turn that off. If we go over here to sphere 3D, go into edit mode and I'm gonna go down here to initialize and we'll do H divides at 16 and V divides at 16. Oops, wrong keyboard. And then uh, in out of space, thanks for showing up. So what's the deal with random seed zero and random numbers seem to have no difference. Let's do something a little more interesting than just a box, just so we can kind of tell uh, what this thing is. So we have our sphere set up. Let's go ahead and select another uh, sphere here. Drag that out, go into edit mode. And we'll go ahead and make poly mesh 3D and we'll go ahead and dynamesh this like so. And we'll hit X to go across X symmetry here. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a polish by features open circle, we'll polish this down just a bit. And we'll go ahead and turn off L to turn off L sim. And we'll go ahead and pull this out like preferences. Turn off edit, line cursor to surface. And we'll go into our move brush here and we'll just start And the reason I'm going to keep this low is because while any time we do a nano mesh or, or uh, an array mesh type functionality, I want to make sure that I have, um, if I want to do like millions of copies, then I'm not going to bog down my machine too much. Just because if you drag, if something is a million polygons, that's fine in ZBrush. But if something's a million polygons and you duplicate it a million times, that's going to be a, a lot of a lot of polygons it has to draw. So you got to kind of pick and choose your how much you really want to tax uh, what you're working on here so we've got like a little thing here that kind of gives us an indication of front side and back and let's go ahead and use the clip brush here so we're going to clip this down got a little weirdo head here alrighty so this will be our insert mesh so we're going to go back to our sphere and we're going to go into uh, BZM as your Z modeler brush. Hover over a face. We're going to insert nano mesh on polygroup all. Now, if I do it now, it's going to do on all polygroups here. Let's go ahead and take this middle strip, and we'll make this hit Control W, and that'll be our middle strip here. I'm going to hit M, and we're going to select our head, and now we're going to drag our head out. If I want to make sure that these are all facing the same way, which they are. Uh, if you're ever in a position where they're not, you can sometimes go to geometry, modify topology, and then do a line to edge. Um, if that doesn't work, or you can also use that in conjunction with the nano mesh uh, alignment. And you can go down here and you can say align to normal, and that'll go ahead and straighten it out. So uh, this looks fine to me, and we'll go ahead and do, we don't want to do fit, we don't want to do fill, we'll do proportional. Uh, if we do a size of one, that'll go ahead and make sure that, you know, they they have the uh, the proportional size to go ahead and fit inside each one of those faces. Um, but if we drop that down, then they can all start dropping down at the same time. Now, question was uh, random seed. So if I go down here to random seed and start doing that, as long if you don't have a random distribution, so this is where you start randomly distributing your nano mesh here. And if you want to, we can also go in here to the Z offset and we can kind of embed these faces a little bit. Um, but so we got to crank up our random distribution and that's just going to keep populating those heads. And this is why I wanted to keep it low because as I keep dragging this, um, these are just instances so I can continue to move the geometry around underneath. Um, the poly group is designating where these things go. In fact, if I go into my Z modeler brush and I start painting, doing our alt paint trick, and then I let go and make it a new poly group, it's gonna go ahead and not assign those. In fact, I can hit shift and that'll start painting with green so that I get rid of those faces on that poly group. Um, if I start alt painting on these ones and then tap shift, that'll go ahead and start painting in blue. And now it'll start painting heads because the blue poly group is dictating where the heads go. Um, hey, in space, what's up? Uh, zero and random numbers seem to have no difference. Um, oh, so for random seed, all that's doing is telling it, and this is the same thing in like a uh, painter, for example, or, or substance designer, 
as long as you have a random distribution and to how many you want, as you do random seed, it should just randomly, it's basically a way to randomize procedural textures. So it's just giving a new start point. So if you have, I'm trying to think of a good example off the top of my head at this early in the morning, basically just a way to randomly start a procedural texture. It doesn't have to be procedural texture, but randomly start a texture where it'll not match. So basically the reason I would do this is if I'm gonna drop in, oh, when we were doing the seed. So if you want to, on my YouTube channel, on the playlists, there's a nano tile um, video here and we go through and we do a bunch of seeds. So the reason why you might wanna do, if you wanna keep your distribution the same, but then change your random seed. So if we put in uh, another head here. Now, if I start dragging out another head, it's gonna replace those. If I hold down shift, that'll go ahead and add new heads. If I hit M, I can drag in like a ring, hold down shift, and now I can just start populating these. So what I can do is I can go back to my index zero, which is my head nano mesh. We can go to copy, go to index one, and we can go to paste. And you're gonna see now there is a ring on every single head uh, because it basically took all of the parameters of that head insert nano mesh and put that and gave it to the ring nano mesh. Now they have the exact same random distribution and the exact same random seed number. If I change that from seven six seven two two to six seven two three, oops, dang it, six seven two three, you're going to see it just feeds it a new number that will randomly uh, position these differently. And if you just keep dragging that random seed around, it's just going to keep picking a random number so that you get just a little bit of randomness through it. So I think uh, that should be what the random seed uh, do, as long as you have random distribution. If you don't have random distribution, then random seed isn't going to do anything because there's nothing random about the distribution. It's just putting a, let's go back to index one and we'll Delete this one. I wonder if we can hide this one. Inventory. Okay, so we'll go ahead and delete that one. And then you're gonna see without any random distribution, every single face is getting a ring. So there's nothing random about it. It's only when you bring up the random distribution that you're allowed to kind of play around with this uh, random seed. Uh, speaking of this random array, if you have, if you go to that link I just sent you, that'll be, if you're using it on a square and you wanna make sure that your left and your right side are going to tile, then you're gonna to wanna to have random array off, I believe. So there's that. Let's go ahead and move out of edit mode here. And go ahead and go here. And I think we have everything on. I'm just gonna put, Whatever that strip is here, I'm gonna alt tap this and I'm gonna drop a cube right down the middle here. I'm gonna go ahead and do split mass points. And I'll go ahead and shrink this down with my gizmo. Now you're gonna see when I drag this out and I go into solo mode here, there's a little bevel on it. That's because it inherited my Q mesh settings on, under dynamic. So I've turned dynamic off just a cube. Um, I'm going to go ahead and keep the Q grid settings. I guess I said Q mesh, Q grid. Uh, but I am going to change this coverage here to kind of tighten up those edges just a bit. That'll work. It looks like that other stuff is just a texture on it. So I'm going to make this a little higher and also make this a little thinner. And we can go ahead and compare it. And I can just kind of move this in and out. And I'm right down the middle, so I, th I think that's about right. We got that piece there. And it looks like we just need, so the inside of this, I don't need to worry about because we have a battery in there, but I guess we can go ahead and put that on there as well. So I'm gonna alt tap this one and we'll just move this out. So if I go in here and I wanna drop like a cylinder 12 on there, I'll do shift D to temporarily turn off my dynamic. I'm gonna drag out a cylinder, go ahead and again, split mass points, go out of solo mode. Let's go ahead and alt tap this battery and I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off with the eyeball. And then if we alt tap this one, let's go ahead and reset this, center it, unmasked mesh center. And we'll go ahead and move this down. Looks like it goes down to about here. Now probably we wanna sync that up with our battery. So if I turn that battery back on and we turn on transparency, you're gonna see now you kinda line this up with the center of the battery, which would be about here. If I just wanna see this and the battery, I can hold down shift, turn everything off in the eyeball, 
and then we can turn our battery back on and now we just have these two and now I can center this perfectly on the battery. Alternatively, we could also take this battery here and if we do Shift D, you're gonna see I just have some information right here as far as uh, edge loops and stuff. I can go ahead and like alt paint these pieces here and then I can hold, I can go in here to like QMesh, Poly Group All, I can hold down Control, I can just pop a copy off. Probably what would be easier though is just to go ahead and duplicate this battery off. Hit Shift D, I'm in solo mode now. I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of, I'm gonna hold down Control Shift and grab these faces back here. Go ahead and Geometry Modify Topology Delete Hidden. Hover over this edge, close convex hole. Hit Control W. And now I've got this sphere back here that I know fits perfectly on the back of my battery because I stole geometry from it. Uh, I can also go in here to insert single edge of the pull down alt and we'll go ahead and get rid of those extraneous. And now if we go to unmesh mesh center, it's gonna be across the x-axis. I'm gonna turn off, I'm gonna hit X to go out of transform, activate symmetry. I'll just toggle that off temporarily, hold down alt, go to this unmesh mesh center, hit X to go back in. And now I have X symmetry turned on and it's right in the middle of my geometry here. So to go out of solo mode, I can scale this to be whatever size I want. I know it's perfectly centered on my mesh because I borrowed it from the mesh. And now I can just go through here to Q mesh polygroup all and just pull this out. So because I've done that, I don't need this cylinder anymore. I'll just kind of placeholder here anyway, so let's go ahead and delete that. Okay, so uh, we have this piece here. We have the piece on the battery. I'm gonna go ahead and shrink this down. So this is gonna be kind of a thin piece that sticks on the back that goes to the center of the battery. And if I want a copy of this, I can just control drag a copy out, or if I know I'm gonna want it to be a separate subtool, I can just duplicate it off, and then we can just move this out. And this will be where these little terminal ends end up touching the metal. So I'll go ahead and finish this one out. So when we have the battery hidden, I'm gonna go ahead and, go ahead and bring all of my subtools back. So I'll hold down Shift, turn that off, Shift, turn that back on. And now I can see all my subtools here. And then we'll just alt tap this battery, turn off the nameplate, and now it's gone. So if I go out of transparency mode, now this terminal end here is gonna be right where we want it. And we'll go ahead and pop this out a little bit. If we want to, we can make it a little bit thicker just to give it a little bit more breathing room here. And let's go ahead and round out some of these edges. So we're gonna go in here to bevel, edge loop complete. And we'll kind of bevel this back. And a couple different ways you can do this. You can use dynamic. If we go to insert single edge loop, we can kind of insert an edge loop here. These are just control loops here. So when I hit D for dynamic subdivisions, it'll just soften that edge out. You can also just manually go through here if you wanna work a little bit higher res. You can go through here and you can do like insert multiple edge loops with interactive elevation and you can just pull in uh, resolution and round that round that edge out if you want to. I'm going to go ahead and stick with dynamic subdivisions here. And it looks like if we want to stick with what a battery does on the flat end of the battery, which is on this side here. This one, I think, usually has like a little nubbin that comes out. So we'll go ahead and we'll stick with that. So on this side, we'll go ahead and do an insert single edge loop, and we'll go ahead and drop in a little nub in here. I'm gonna hold down Alt to paint this side here. Let's go ahead and do a quick mirror and weld across the X, make sure it's mirrored. Seems like I was having a hard time with that. There we go. And now I can just do Q mesh polygroup all. Let me pull that out just a little bit. And then again, we'll just go ahead and bevel this edge loop here, and we'll just drop in and insert single edge loop on this side. Now over here, what we can do is if this is a fall off is too much or too little, looks like it's a little tight. Let me see here, collapse, poly loop. That's weird. I'll go ahead and bevel this here. Okay, a little softer fall off there. Uh, you can just use creasing. We've done this before. We go into dynamic and then change your crease level and your smooth. So it's okay. It actually already is dialed in. So smooth level of four, crease level of three. So if you wanted to, if you went in here and you did like your crease on your poly groups, 
um, you could change that blade crease level of two and that'll still give you a sharper transition but still smooth the fall off between those uh, but we'll go ahead and keep it just super soft and that's fine that'll work and then on this side here this one looks like it pokes all the way through the object so let's go ahead and I'm going to hit W alt tap this side I'm going to solo mode here and alt tap right in the middle of here so we can set that so it's going to poke out a little bit on this side I'm going to scale it all the way through so that it goes through the other side as well and this one since on the back side of this battery here has a little thing coming out I'm going to put a little divot on that on this side as opposed to the little extension we're going to do bevel divot this in and we'll go ahead and round these out too so we'll go ahead and bevel edge loop complete and if we want to all we need to do now is just tap on this side it'll keep my same bevels and now we'll do another insert single edge loop or if you wanted to we can go to inset polygroup island um, you could do polygroup all but it's not going to help us any any because it's going to be have the same polygroup over here and we're also going to do region so we're going to go ahead and uh, inset this and now if we want to slide this we can slide edge loop complete we're going to slide this down to about the size we want. Looks like this one's a little, we'll keep this one a little bit bigger. Maybe here. Well, not on this side, it probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense. We'll slide this one smaller. Q mesh, polygroup ball, and we'll just push this back. Now instead of building in a bunch of control loops, what we can do again is we can just manually go through here and we can say, okay, crease, edge loop complete, we'll crease here, we'll crease here. I do like having a little control loop in here to keep that polarized end from acting wonky. We'll hit D and then we'll do our crease level of like two. And now um, we'll get a fall off there. Let's do a crease level of like one. That'll be even softer. And we'll put another control loop in here. All right, something like that. Um, on this side, we'll make that a little bit bigger and inset might work just fine. So we'll just keep our inset properties and we'll move this in. Let's go out of solo mode here. So it looks like in the reference it kind of just peeks over the side here. So when we inset this, we'll just drop this in here and then we'll just cube mesh this back. Now this side I guess could poke out if we wanted it to or poke in. And on this side too, I'll just go ahead and insert loop here, loop here, and then we'll just go ahead and crease here and here, and then D. We'll call that good enough. And then we'll go ahead and turn dynamic back on for these ones. Alrighty. I think we're good enough on this one. There's some detail. Ah, uh, looks like there is something we missed in here. There's some detail through here where the battery kind of sits. So we can go ahead and add that real quickly too. Uh, question, can you demonstrate how to export maps for multiple subtools? Um, I would just use like all at once. You might have to be a little bit fancy. You would go over here to multi-map exporter and you would have your maps, your subtools all set up to, you know, go from your lowest subdivision level to highest subdivision level, and then you would bake those all separately. <laughs> and then you would go into another program and combine them all together. Um, not my favorite thing to do, so that's why I usually end up, you know, what I'll do is do, uh, let me see if I have examples of that. I'm sure I do. Let me see, YouTube. Like what my usual, if I'm just doing uh, rapid iteration through ZBrush into another program, what I'll do is I'll save an FBX out of my high reses and then I'll just bake it off in Painter and have it do its maps and then just immediately start texturing. If you go to my playlist here and you go to the live stream highlights, if you scroll down, you'll start seeing some robots and that's we on my channel, we end up going through different ways to we basically make a robot and then we save our high reses and then we export those and then we start texturing it. So just a fast way to kind of iterate through 
and not have to sit there and go, okay, here's my, I've got 20 subtools, so I'm going to have to bake 20 times, but if I want them all on the same zero to one texture sheet, I'm going to have to bake those all separately. I suppose you could merge, if, if you go through here and you merge these together, you have to, number one, make sure that you don't have any overlapping UVs, obviously, unless you want to share the UV space, but generally speaking, if these are all different objects, you want your own UV space, you have a zero to one space in your UVs. But the problem is with subtools and UVs and ZBrush, I think it might, if you have UVs on a subtool that you made in ZBrush, it might automatically, like with UV Master, it might automatically make your object fill the zero to one. I don't mess with UVs and baking too much in ZBrush, to be honest. But you'd have to figure that out. You might have to merge them together first and then UV Master them and then split them back out if you wanted to have separate subtools. Because, yeah, UVing all these things together, if they had separate UVs and you went in here to merge, you'd want to make sure you had UV turned on so you could merge them and keep their UVs, but then you'd want to make sure the UVs are separate, which would be a little bit of a, a trial for me. But that's a, that's a tougher one. That's something I don't do ever, so that's why it's a little bit uh, iffy for me. So now uh, we got the back of this thing and the bottom of this thing. So we're gonna, again, we're gonna steal some geometry from our battery here just to make sure we have this battery kind of seated in here. So we'll duplicate this off. This looks like a weird piece. Let me go into solo mode here, Shift D. And uh, all right, I'm gonna steal this geometry here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold down Control Shift. I'm gonna grab these middle pieces here. We're gonna go how did we get interior spaces on here? I guess when I did polygroup all, oh, you know what it is? Uh, we have, it's a battery, so we put like a plastic lining on this. So we have a little plastic lining around that. Okay, so we duplicated this off. I'm gonna hold down Control Shift. We're gonna select just a plastic lining here. We're gonna go to Geometry Modified Topology, Delete Hidden. And now I'm gonna take these middle pieces here, do Control Shift X to expand, and then we'll do another Delete Hidden. We're gonna go to auto group so we get the inside and the outside shell. Hold down control shift, grab the outside shell and then do another delete hidden. And just for the heck of it, we'll go ahead and insert single edge loop and hold down alt to get rid of this. So we're just kind of cleaning up all that extraneous stuff off that battery. So now we just have the outer shell of that battery available to us. And now we can go ahead and start scaling this out. So what I'm gonna do is again, we're gonna go, uh, looks like we're on the mesh center, so we're fine. So we'll go ahead and, looks like we just kind of give this a little bit of curve out to the side. If I want to see the other side of that temporarily, I'm going to go to double, which is under your display properties here. Just turn that on. And I do it temporarily. I don't like to do double on all the time because if I ever do an operation like QMesh Polygroup Ball and I QMesh something and it's like, okay, it looks fine. And then I go in here to inflate and I inflate it up and it starts deflating. That means my normals are flipped. So if I turn off double, you're going to see, oh, I have flip normals. So then just go to display properties and flip them and then I'm fine. I just like to see where I'm usually at. The only reason I would turn double on is if I want to see the other side of that just for positioning purposes. But we'll go ahead and say, okay, this is what I'm looking for. I don't need this extra geometry up at the top here. So I'm going to go hold down Control Shift, Alt, and we'll just go ahead and then again, geometry, modified topology, topology, delete hidden. And we can kind of pull this down because it looks like it kind of goes down a little bit or we need to make this a little more shallow. So I'm gonna go into solo mode here, hold down Alt, and I'm just gonna tap right in the middle of this object. If I Now if I scale down, it's gonna just make it a little bit more shallow on the sides, but we'll still keep that contact on the bottom so the battery kind of sits in there. So make it a little bit more shallow, and now we can go through here and we'll give it a little thickness. So QMesh Polygroup Ball, and we'll pull it out. Now, I do have double turned on, so I turn double off. Everything stays normal looking, so I know I'm fine. I'm gonna go ahead and do a crease tolerance, which is under your geometry crease menu. And then we'll go ahead and turn on dynamic and then we'll do smooth subdiv four crease level three. And I think that'll be fine. So that'll give it that little seat to kind of sit in there. And it also looks like it has holes poked through. So let's play around with that a little bit. Um, let's go back to shift Z and we'll go back to our document here. And we'll snap our camera view back with the zap link. And you're gonna see there's like one, two, three, four little holes in here. So if I go into solo mode, 
we can now go to insert multiple edge loops and we'll just insert edge loops oops let's turn off interactive elevation there I'm just going to kind of match lines up. So we got one, two, three, f one, two, three, four. Okay, that matches up pretty good. So we've got one hole here, 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 here. So we'll say, let's go ahead and do a quick uh, Shift D to turn off dynamic, and we'll do uncrease all. Here we go. So we want to put a hole. We'll get here Control W as well. So I want to put a hole through this object where every single one of these lines are. So let's find out the thickness of those holes. We're going to go to Bevel Edge Loop Complete, and we'll just bevel this up, and we'll just go through and roll those tap to keep all the same widths. And then they kind of go up to about this point here. So now that I've got the bevel set, I'm going to hold down Alt and just paint Oops. on the faces. And now I can just do a Q Mesh Polygroup Ball and just pull these through. So now I'm going to do... Uh, he'll hit Control W, make this all in polygroup. Uh, if you want to, you can do group by normals, and that'll go ahead and group everything based on that max angle. <coughs> this is all under your polygroup menu. Anytime I'm dealing with polygroups, it's under your polygroup menu. Uh, but you don't even need to do that. You can go into your geometry crease menu, and then you can just, if you want, by the way, if you want this custom menu, go to, let me send that to you guys here. Hey, Angel, thanks for showing up. You can go to my Gumroad or my Cube Brush page, and at the very bottom, there is a, whoops, hold on, I just drag something, there you go, go to the very bottom of my Gumroad page and you're going to see something that says intro to ZBrush files, that'll walk you through the instructions on how to install the custom menu, not saying you need to, you can make your own, it's not, I mean, definitely make your own, it's super easy. Uh, I probably send this out every time, but if you want instructions on how to make your own uh, custom menus like this one and then hotkeys and stuff, uh, go to my YouTube channel and go to Intro to ZBrush Part 2, and that'll walk you through all that stuff. So, okay, we've got this thing. So now if we hit D, uh, these are going to be creased on this side, which is not necessarily what I want here. So I'm going to hit Shift D. And then we're just going to go through here really quickly and we'll do a crease edge loop or crease edge and hold down alt and we'll just uncrease these corners here. And it's doing it on both sides because we have X turned on, which is turning on symmetry across the X axis, which is fine because this is a symmetrical object. So we're saving ourselves quite a bit of work. There we go. Now when you hit D, we'll get nice rounded corners here. Um, if we want to kind of alleviate some of that pinching here, let's see if we can kind of fix that a little bit. What I should have done first before I pulled those through. Let's do this right. Alright, so we've got this here. I'm going to go ahead and build in a little padding here. So we're going to go to inset polygroup all inset region and we're just going to build in a little lip through here and now when we pull this, well we have to do it for the other side too. So let's go ahead and hold down alt and paint this side to make them identical. Oops. And then we'll just tap. Oh, you know what? It didn't inherit because I pulled it through and then undid it. That's fine. Close enough, right? And then we'll do a Q-Mesh polygroup ball. We'll pull that through. So I think that'll build in a little bit of padding. If we don't want this line in here, we can go through, but it might be fine. So now you can hit D. Let's go ahead and crease. And then again, we'll go through here and we'll do crease edge. We'll hold down Alt. And I think if we do crease edge loop partial, it'll stop at the corners. Although, probably we could do edge loop complete because I don't think those edges are going to go anywhere that's going to matter. So we'll see what this does. There we go. So I got, well, we still got a little bit of creasing there. Let's see if we add an insert single edge loop here and here, kind of constrain that, kind of smooth that a little bit. All right, so we've got the holes on there. If we do want to, let's go into solo mode here. Uh, if you see this, it kind of goes to a pointy end, You can, but you don't want to crease it. So what you want to do is maybe do insert single edge loop, and you can kind of just, if you drag out and up, you're going to see 
it kind of rounds that end off a little bit better, but it doesn't continue on to the other side. So if we want to slice through both sides here, what we can do, hold down control shift, go to our slice curve, and we'll just insert an edge loop right on there for everybody. And then we'll do a quick mirror and weld across the x-axis, which is geometry modified topology mirror and weld. And that'll go ahead and round those corners out for us. Whew. Okay, so uh, now we've got those holes kind of built in like so. So if we get rid of this battery, it'll look a little bit closer to what the concept has here. And I think we're done. I think we're done with this here. So let's go ahead and you know what? Let's have a little bit of fun. So I'm going to go here to save as and we'll say this is a laser cannon. And oh, you know what? No, we're missing something. On the back of this thing, there needs to be a ring. So I'm going to alt tap this inside ring here. We'll go ahead and duplicate this off. And we'll go into polyframe here, go into solo mode. And I want this just to be a solid cylinder here. So what I'm going to do is shift D to go out of dynamic here. Let's go ahead and go to select rectangle. I'm going to isolate this one, delete hidden. And then one more time, we'll just do a close convex hole. Hit control W, go ahead and uncrease all and then insert single edge loop hold down alt there you go so now that we have that we'll go ahead and pull out again so q mesh poly polygroup all now if you want to move across this surface normal all i have to do is start q meshing this side here and hold down shift that'll pull it across that surface normal so when we go out of solo mode you're going to see if we just pull here with shift and q mesh we can kind of dial in exactly how far we want the cylinder to go. Now, I do want to round off the cylinder. This is basically what I'm making here. Let's go ahead and turn this opacity up. We're just making this little ring around here. So it's kind of like, a, you can see on the specular, it's rounded out right there. So we'll go ahead and we can let dynamic subdivisions uh, do the heavy lifting for us. So if we go into transparency and ghost, we can just pull this forward a little bit. Like I said before, you can go through here and you can bevel this out and you can go to insert multiple edge loops with interactive elevation and you can like pull out corners and stuff. Uh, but instead what I'm going to do is just simply insert a control loop here, a control loop here, and maybe for the back as well. And now when I hit D, that's just going to give me a rounded edge just through my dynamic subdivisions here. Um, I'm not controlling it perfectly, but I think that'll be fine for our purposes. Now, this thing right here might be a little bit thick because that ring comes out in front of it. So let's see how much we can get away with as far as pushing this thing back. So if I want to, again, push this thing back along its surface normal here, let's go ahead and get rid of this one. Insert single edge, pull down alt, and then we'll do another polygroup, group by normals. And I'm just going to go Q mesh polygroup all, and we'll just push this back by holding down shift. And that'll allow us to kind of push along its surface normal here. So we'll thin this out as much as we can get away with, probably to about here. And then for this one, we're going to thicken it up so it pushes past this one. It's not going to match the match perfectly, but you know you got to kind of fudge these things sometimes when it's drawn in 2D, and it has to be made in 3D. Now we got kind of an awkward. Uh, thing going on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know what, you're going to be a little bit thinner and also I'm going to hold down alt and tap on that surface normal. So I'm just going to push this back so it just sits flush back in there. I don't know what that thing is or what it's supposed to do, uh, but that's just going to number one, if we want to bake this thing, it'll bake a little bit better and it makes it look a little bit less awkward having something just kind of sitting there. So, alright, we got this thing good. Let's go ahead and do save as laser cannon. Let's go ahead and render this thing, external render. We got Keyshot 7 installed, got the new computer, so we'll kind of play with this a little bit. Question from Craig Kelly, do you print out any of your models? I do. Um, my 3D printer is in Florida right now. Uh, it's a printer I share uh, with Louise Cruel. He printed out uh, my reptile stuff a while back in the, if you go to my Gumroad page, the or my cube brush page, my gum road and cube brush page. I have the uh, reptile creature series uh, in the bonus section of there. We talk about, um, oops, this one. We talk a little bit about uh, the 3D printing process. He goes over the 3D printing process. I don't do a lot of 3D printing. I keep waiting for that 
be all end all 3d printer and i the one that has like the right price versus the right quality and the right speed then i think it's still such a niche market that it's not um not quite there yet for me but i think i'm finally need to make the plunge i've been looking at the form too a bit to kind of because i want you know we i have a maker bot but the quality isn't quite there for me as far as you know getting rid of the stepping if i want to do really really nice high resolution quality prints so the form 2 seems to have a little bit of a nicer finish and that way i don't have to do like the acetone bath type thing and i don't know kind of avoid some of that as far as cleanup because cleanup is a pain on those things i try to do it if you go to my art station page um there's a breakdown on uh what is it I did some cake toppers and man, those things were a pain to clean up. I learned a lot, but if you look in the cake toppers here, you'll see, you'll see that trial and error. All right. So yeah, and that'd be perfect for uh, jewelry design and stuff. Uh, Thomas Whitlock, he's on, he streams here. So if you go to the streaming channel, Here's my, if you want to go to the past episodes that I've done, there's where that is. If you go to the Pixelogic channel from there, uh, if you go to, yeah, just click on Pixelogic, you'll see all of the playlists. Whoa. You'll see all of the live streamers here. And there is, um, Thomas does jewelry. I probably butchered his last name, but he's on there somewhere. Check him out. Hush. All right. Hey, bro, uh, you're not too late. I think we've been doing this for about 45 minutes. We just kind of wrap this up and we're going to do a little bit of rendering here. So there's a couple new features in Keyshot. One of those is if we go over here to materials and we go to metal. Any one of these metals here. So we grab like a nickel polished and we just drag this onto our object here. If we double click that, we can go over here. Oh, by the way, let's see. Okay, so we're using all of our CPU We've got 32 cores here. I probably don't need that many. I'm going to drop this down to 94. We'll just use 30 cores so we can use a, keep a little bit open for OBS. <laughs> so we'll use a lot of cores, and this thing renders so damn fast. So this is the, let's see if I go into here, this PC. Let's see. Robert A's. So right now we're on the AMD Thread Ryzen Threadripper 1950X 16 core processor. Uh, the base is 3.4. I can overclock this to 4.0 sometime. Um, I'm not really doing the hardware stuff just yet, but eventually we'll get a little bit more into hardware. Uh, we got 128 gig of RAM. And uh, what are we on here? If we go to... Let's fire up. We're using the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti with, I think this is the 11 gig version. Yeah, the 11, 11 gig GDDR5. And everything's running off of uh, Samsung Evo two terabyte C drive. I'm trying to install another drive, but this cable management on this main gear is taxing me a little. So I'm trying to get that figured out. But anyway, it makes Keyshot awful nice to use because that is a monster CPU there. Um, so I take time to, to learn Z modeling. I prefer Maya, but I always learn stuff in ZBrush. I'm really comfortable with ZBrush. I never take much time with the Z modeling. You might as well. Uh, it, it saves you a lot of time. Like it would be tough for me to go back to like, if I had to do a little like extrude a face or insert an edge, I would hate to have to use go Z or go back into Maya and import export. That seems like I mean, you can use ZModeler for whatever you want um, as far as like digging in deep and using ZModeler for everything, but I use ZModeler for everything just because I hate going back and forth between programs. But all programs as far as making, extruding faces, inserting edges, they're all pretty much the same to me. Um, I don't have a favorite. So, uh, but anyway, so under the metal here, if you turn on anodized, uh, you can do anodized metal for each one of these metals here. So if you want to kind of dial in you know, our film refractive index and our extinction coefficient and our thickness, 
you can start dialing some of that in uh, as far as instead of having anodized metal each one of these metals can also be anodized um, you can also go through here on your nickel properties let me see double click here and metal type roughness I guess there isn't a color anymore let's see if we go to steel still has a color so if you want to just take the easy way out which will be what I'm going to do I'm just going to do like a dark dark purplish which is what's in the reference here and we'll go ahead and crank that roughness up it's not a mirror polish so we can make that a bit rougher and honestly let's just type in one there we go say something like that. Uh, if I want to copy this material around to all the other pieces, if I keep dragging from here, uh, it's just going to keep making more materials down here. So what I'm going to do is go and drag from this section over here. We'll just drag up here. And those might be a slightly different metal. Ah, they look kind of the same. So we'll go ahead and drag those here, and then drag it here, and then drag it here. There's also a new material in Keyshot 7, which is under... Where is that plastic? Cloudy plastic. This one's kind of a cool one. So depending on how thick and thin your object is, let's go ahead and take these screws, for example. If I go to my scene here, I can right click here and I can go to uh, show only. And we'll just look at these screws for a second. So if we do like cloudy plastic purple, this is going to be translucent. So um, the thinner the mesh is, the less cloudy it's going to be. The thicker the mesh is, the more cloudy it's going to be. And you can kind of dial these settings in here. Let's go ahead and go to lighting product so we can kind of see that come in a little bit clearer. And also under material, if we go to drop that transparency. Let's also change this lighting environment here. They've also got a few more HDRI, a few different ones. You can always go to the Keyshot Cloud and download any of the legacy ones that they don't have included. I don't think they ever delete anything. I just throw them, I think they throw them up on the cloud. So let's go ahead and go ahead and go back to environment. So we can change the HDRI environment, but down here we're going to go and change this to just like a color background. This one's kind of cool. Now you're going to see uh, there's a little bit of faceting on this screw. One thing you can do in Keyshot without having to go back is if this was a NURBS object, you could go through there and just tessellate on the fly. But since it's not, you can also go into scene mode here. And let's play around with the normals. I'm going to go in here to edit geometry. And we can say edit normals. And we're going to say uh, calculate the vertex normals. 45 degrees is usually fine. And then we can go ahead and hit apply. And that'll go ahead and smooth our normals as long as it's not less than 45 degrees. And that'll go ahead and smooth our object out. So that way I don't have to go back, subdivide it even more, and bring it back in. I can just smooth the normals and give us a little bit of a softer result here. So this is a really cool one. I like that one. Um, let's see. Yeah, and uh, in modeling in Maya is a little bit different. I mean, I, I do a lot. Of, I used to do a lot of modeling in Maya. But since I'm working ZBrush for iteration purposes, it's just easier for me to kind of stay in there. Um, I have a slight problem with MicroMesh. The preview on the mesh looks fine, but does not appear on PBR Render. Any idea why? Hmm. That might be a bug, but we'll check it out in just a second. Yeah, this is without UV. You don't need to have UVs in Keyshot. I mean, you can if you want to tile things in a particular way, um, but you don't need to. So here you can kind of see... Let's see if we can go back to our material here. Trying to make this a little, oh, you know what? Okay, let's do this. Let's go back to our scene here and we'll say, show all parts. Let's take one that has a lot of thick and thin. We'll take this piece here. environment 
product. We don't need to turn on caustics or anything, do we? Can't imagine. Anyway, that's new material. Let's go ahead and go back to show all, all parts, and we'll go ahead and undo. And if you did want to, uh, you know, put a label on here or do, you can do tiling. It'll just do, it's uh, basically a projection texturing. So yeah, you don't need UVs for this in particular. Uh, and this lighting actually kind of matches what we have in our reference. So that's kind of cool. Uh, so let's go ahead and put some metal on for these, these objects here. So we'll go back here. Let's go back to steel and we'll do steel polished on these pieces here. And we don't want to link those. And I'm going to play around with this roughness just a bit. That'll be fine. Now these pieces here are like a rubber or a plastic, so we just go in here and type in rubber. Okay, we got a rubber in here. We'll go ahead and throw that on here. And we'll change these rubber properties just a little bit. Looks like they're just, the, I mean, the lighting environment could be dictating uh, the color of these as well, but it looks like these are just a little bit lighter blue rubber. It's not a super solid dark rubber. And we can go ahead and just assign that here as well. On the inside of that, it looks like more of a hard plastic. So we'll go to plastic, shiny. Now there's shiny cloudy. We want hard shiny. And we'll go ahead and drop in a black for now. Double click this one. And we'll go ahead and change that to like, and actually we can go ahead and just sample a blue if we want to. So we can just click on here and kind of sample any of these color blues. Uh, but that should be fine desaturated a little darker and not quite that shiny that'll work and I suppose we can keep reusing that steel I think so let's go ahead and drop the steel up here and there might be a steel in there but we can ignore that for now uh, the battery itself we can kind of I don't know we can just put a plastic on that And we'll go ahead and just make that to like a dark gray for now. I'll rough that up just a tiny bit. For the glass, let's see what kind of glass we have. Let's do a basic glass here. I don't necessarily want to see through it. We'll do solid glass. It looks like this has got a kind of very cartoony blue. Um, this isn't necessarily the approach I would take for a kind of a cell shaded. I mean, there is a tune shader in here, and they've made some uh, additions to that too. So if we do like a tune outline, we can do. Okay, here's another thing too. So we've got a scene here. You're going to see we have model sets. And okay, they changed this a little bit on me. Let's do another one. Call it tune. So with this one, the default is the one we're playing with. Tune is checked. So if we change this tune to be like tune shaded. So now we got these objects here. So we, now when we turn on default and we turn off tune. So this is just a way to kind of, you can do layered uh, stuff right now. So that's kind of neat. So we'll go ahead and do tune by itself. And if we double click this one, we should get the material properties for the tune shader. And then we can say the contour color is fine. Let's change that contour width. Kind of bump that a little bit. Contour angle, that'll give you more or less. So here it kind of thickens up. Here it kind of thins it out a little bit. Shadow strength, you can play with that a little bit. Transparency even, that's kind of neat. You can kind of do like a, like a schematic drawing of your object. Bump that res in. Kind of neat. Uh, but if we go back to our scene here, we can just turn on default and turn off tune. Yeah, we're back where we started. Um, let's try again, maybe. And you can't make this whole thing glass if you wanted to. So if you go over here, you can kind of see we have an entire glass object here. Now, if we are doing glass, then yeah, lighting. Uh, probably you might want to turn on caustics if you're going to do water or anything like that. You want to render through it. Um, you could do that, but we won't do the whole thing glass. All right, glass basic is fine. 
what else we got? There probably should be a lens in there, but we never added that in because I couldn't see it. But we'll go ahead and leave that alone for now. So on this plastic here, let's do hard. No, we'll do clear plastic, shiny, because it's going to be, well, we'll start with shiny because it's going to be like tape. We'll go ahead and assign this to our tape here. And then we'll crank the roughness up just a little bit so it doesn't have to be super duper shiny, but it'll kind of start shiny. And if we want to move the lighting environment around, if I turn the environment back on, you're going to see we have an environment back here. If we hold down control, oops, control and left mouse, you can just toss this environment around if we want to change it. Let's play around with this a little bit. Clothing store, industrial kitchen. And these, I think, might have been taken from a downloadable thing they have on their website here. But I like that first one. here and of course you can toss in backplate images and stuff too I need to actually on this one install I do, I do have the ZBrush one so these are the ones you can get through the <coughs> ZBrush bridge and you can install those and this is fine I think let's do an interior now I guess that would be if we were doing our own lights here so if we wanted to let's go ahead and we can throw a steel on here and if you're looking and everything looks fine, you're like, oh, what else needs it? I can see right here this rubber probably needs to go on there. So we'll just put this rubber over here, and we'll give steel to these little knobs here. And it looks like I need to put one back there as well. But uh, you can also go, and it looks like that ring here needs to also be whatever this material is here. This is our hard, shiny plastic. And we'll just put steel on here as well. If you want to see anything like, oh, these ZBrush materials here, let's go ahead and right click this and do uh, select parts of the material. And that'll show you, oh, yeah, right up here. So we'll go ahead and drop steel on here and steel on here and. I'm not quite sure what that is. We'll go ahead and do, I guess, another plastic. And we'll go ahead and sample from our image here. It's like this color. Make it a little bit brighter. Something like that. A little more saturated. One last one. Uh, can a ZBrush poly paint go into Keyshot? Yes. When we did um, I think the latest version of that, if you go to my playlist here and you click on the Batman cowl, we kind of paint his face a little bit before we go into Keyshot to render him out. So yeah, it'll just take uh, the vertex colors and bring those in. So we'll go ahead and do this steel polished on that one. Um, if we wanted to, and now you can see the glass a little bit better. It's behaving a little bit better here. Um, I suppose if we wanted to, we could, we could go ahead and put the lens in here. Let's go ahead and do that because this is going to be like the laser thing. So I'm going to go over here. Instead of going back in a ZBrush, I'm just going to go to Edit, Add Geometry. Let's go ahead and do a rounded cylinder. That'll work. And then we'll go ahead and rotate this forward. Let's say negative 90. And we'll just move this up into place. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on scale so I can see it. And let's go ahead and fill this thing in with like a rounded cylinder. Now I could use this as a lens um, while I'm in here, but we can also use it a couple different ways. So if I go through here and we kind of scale this down, let's also go back into 
performance mode. Might be able to see this a little bit better. There we go. And say, okay, you're going to fit right in here, and we're going to use you as, say, our glass lens. I'm going to go to my scene here. This will be our rounded cylinder. I can go in here, and there's the retest light, so I guess this might be a NURBS object. So we can go over here to, yeah, maybe not. We'll call this lens. And this one we can just throw on that glass that we're using. But what I can also do is I'll go ahead and duplicate this one. <coughs> and we'll go ahead and scale this down a little bit. And we'll also non-uniformly scale it. Let's see if we can do this. There we go. So if we go through here, let's say, okay, that's fine. Let's go into our material. Let's go into our lights. So we can try doing, you, there's a couple different ways you could do this. You could do like an emissive light, um, but this one is just going to it'll go ahead and shine. So if we go back here to lighting product, um, it'll go ahead and light this thing up. If you wanted to, you could double click this thing. And if you wanted to have that light effect, but not see it, you can go in here and say not visible to camera. And that way you can get, you know, it's kind of lighting the object, but you don't see it. Uh, but in this case, let's try like an area light. And we'll change this to Watts. I'll make this like red. I seem to remember that's kind of what was used in the cartoon here. Oops. Need to change that. Let's go ahead and right click this. We'll go to move. You can also set up, there's also a hotkeys you can do now. So if we go up here to, uh, I mean, you can hit K. And that'll bring up your hotkeys here. You can also go to setup details, and that'll be the hotkeys area where you can assign your own hotkeys. And then here's the hotkeys you use all the time. Uh, so now we can kind of get that look going. And we'll let this res in. Uh, Z poly paint. Cool. Yes, you can. And um, what about the IES file? You can use that as well. I haven't messed around with a lot of that. Um, but you can bring in your own, or a, like if you want to do a specific, like an exact lighting scenario from an exact light bulb, you could bring those in. Here's your IES lights. Um, this one, do they have like a laser one? These usually have a pretty significant fall off, which is not what I want for a laser. So I probably wouldn't do that in particular. Um, let's see what else we got lighting in here scene and I think we got everything textured up. Um, the one thing we didn't do was like texture this battery. <sighs> I could do that through the material graph maybe with a gradient but I might be kind of out of my element <laughs> uh, texturing that thing. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's a tougher one. Uh, but yeah so we'll go ahead and leave that. You know what? Let's go ahead and save this just in case you want to hop back in here. We'll call this uh, laser cannon and okay so we go ahead and stop this quit all right so let's see there was a question about uh, micro mesh preview on the mesh looks fine does not appear in the BPR render let's see so for micro mesh one thing I do uh, let me see if I can find it here. I think it was under Lumi questions. So if you go under Lumi questions here. So let's talk about Quadro. We do a, and I guess I can do it here as well. We do a, like a fishnet kind of thing. So let's go ahead and grab our uh, tool. And we'll grab the Nick Z male average. And I'm going to go ahead and do delete other and uh, you know you can also go in here we know i know there's some layers on here so if you go down here to 
layers. We have arms up, and then arms aside, and then mouth open. Uh, if you want to, you can just hit bake all, and that'll get rid of them. You can also go in here, if you haven't checked out, if you go to Google, Pixelogic downloads, you can go to their uh, ZBrush plugins. If you scroll all the way down, you're going to see the employee created plugins. There's one that's called uh, Clean Tool Master. So if you install that and you go over here to Z plugins, you're going to have Clean Tool Master. And this is where you can actually you can bake all layers on all your subtools. So if you have a bunch of subtools with layers on them or morph targets or delete morph targets, you can kind of do a lot of cleanup work in here that's kind of nice. You can also do Z repeat it, which is in there. And if you want to set up your own, like here's bake all layers, you can do bake all layers to visible or all or selected. And then you can do that. So just a few other options for you. So, okay, so we've got this object here and we're gonna to go to um, divide him up a few times. And let's say we want to do, let's go to perspective mode here. We're gonna hold that control. We're gonna to go to mask, lasso. And we'll go ahead and go across X symmetry as well. All right. So we'll go ahead and duplicate him off, hit Control w isolate this part of him, delete hidden. Uh, if we want to clean these edges up, we'll just go ahead and run my macro. I think that'll work okay. And we'll go ahead and Z-Remesh this thing. So that's going to be under Geometry, Z-Remesh. And that's going to be Z-Remesh, data size down to zero, target polygon out of half. And we can go ahead and just Z-Remesh this down. So let's say we want to replace every single one of these uh, with a mesh here. And we also have double turned on, so we're going to turn that off. Um, now, instead of doing nano mesh, which we could definitely do, we're going to use micro mesh. Is that what we're talking about here? Uh, micro mesh, yeah. So let's replace every single one of these faces with a mesh. Um, if we want to use the ring, we can. So all we need to do is go, it's been a while since I used micro mesh. Let's say geometry, modify topology, micro mesh. We'll just go ahead and select that. And we'll do a ring. And then micro mesh is only visible in the best preview render. Turn on draw micro mesh in the render palette. So under render, BPR render properties and then draw micro meshes on there. So now uh, you're going to see these rings are kind of all over the place. Let's go ahead and do our uh, line edge, make them sort make them go all the way. Uh, if we do spin edge, we can kind of spin them in different directions. So there we got that. Now if we hit BPR, oh, whoops, we're sending this over to Keyshot. <laughs> I forgot I had turned that on. Uh, I mean, if we want to look at it we can say that, okay, it replaced all of those faces with the uh, BPR Geo, which is kind of cool. So now we've got a bunch of rings in here. So just for fun, let's say, okay, you know what? Let's go to our materials here and we'll type in steel. So we'll do some stainless steel rings in here. Now these things too, I know I could change the, the normal on them, but this is basically the BP, BPR being shot over to Keyshot. So, oops, we didn't mean to do that, but eh, who cares? No biggie, let's pretend like we meant to. So over here, I'm gonna turn on render, turn off Keyshot. So now when we hit BPR, that'll be our best preview render. And uh, looks like it's working for me. Um, preview on the mesh looks fine, but does not appear in the, oh, uh, PBR. So physically based rendering is a little bit different, but I'm assuming you mean BPR render as far as like rendering in here. Uh, it seems to be working okay for me. If I want to make this real geometry uh, with micro mesh, I would go over here to convert BPR to geo. And now it seems to be fine. Let's see if we can reconstruct here. No. Oh, maybe we can. So. <laughs> Uh, because those were subdivided, I was able to go through and reconstruct those like I might have uh, messed those up a little bit. Let's go ahead and, okay, so we go in here. Let's see if we can reconstruct once. Sometimes it's useful to kind of like reconstruct down to a lower subdivision level, but if we go back up, okay, that's fine. I think we reconstructed a little bit too far. There we go. So now uh, we've constructed back down to a lower res mesh. And now it's slightly higher and slightly higher. So if you wanted to deal with lower resolution measures, you can just delete higher. And now you've got a little bit more manageable rings. So 
Anyways, uh, it seems to be working for me. I'm not sure why it wouldn't. Oh, same Marin well bet. So now they're both going same direction. So that's uh, micro mesh in a nutshell for you. Let's see what else we got here. Anything else under streaming? Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. I can't recreate it. At least not just kind of playing around here. Uh, we didn't get too far with this guy. Let's let's push this guy a little bit further here. So I'm going to take this dude. We got this here. Let's go ahead and have a, a little bit more fun with this helmet here. So in here, I'm going to go ahead and crank this Z intensity up, and we'll toggle L on, crank it up, and then turn it off. So we can go through here and start um, just kind of playing around with these sections here. Um, one thing you might have seen is uh, Joseph dressed as a helmet where he uses some techniques to kind of break panels off. And we can go ahead and do a little bit of that too here. So we're going to go ahead and split this off under your subtool split menu. Um, if we dynamesh this thing together, it'll go ahead and close holes for us, but it'll kind of leave us some crusty edges. Not a huge deal. We can get rid of them by smoothing. But one thing I like to do is do a close holes operation, mirror and weld it, hit W, control tap this back piece here, hold down control, and just pull out a little bit of a, an edge ring here just for some kind of breather room. So we can kind of, as we're dynameshing this, uh, we're not doing having to you know clean up a bunch of flat little faces there, and this is just for refining purposes here. So if I go here and I reconstruct or I dynamesh here, uh, this is just so I can go to solo mode and we can start kind of start cleaning up this helmet independently from his shoulders here. So we can kind of go through here and start cleaning this up. Now, if I want to, I can go through here and we can go into our clay brush here. I can just start pulling out shapes and go maybe go into trim dynamic, hold down Alt and then push back in and then go into our standard brush here and kind of push this stuff in. Uh, we did have a concept for this that we were kind of playing with. Let me see if I can find that. There he is. Go ahead and load him up. This is a concept that was done in ZBrush. If you go back through my episodes, you'll probably find that. Uh, you're going to see when it goes black, it goes to transparent. So if you want to avoid that, I'm going to go to intensity here and we're just going to kind of dial that intensity back just a bit. And then we'll also drag uh, this opacity back. So now when you hit Z, you go to solo mode here, you're going to see we just basically recreated this guy in ZBrush. So now that we have this, uh, let's go ahead and take this head and we'll kind of scale it in just a little bit here. And it also looks like he has a human head under here, like a little Robocop action. So let's go ahead and smooth this out. If we want to paint our concept onto this guy, we can go here to RGB and just paint our concept right onto him. So we can see where these things are going to go. Now, if I want to sculpt on this thing, um, I probably want to knock this back a little bit. So I'm going to go to RGB intensity down with white selected and then just fill. And we'll just kind of knock that back just a bit. Let's go ahead and borrow a head from Nick Z again. So I'm going to hit the comma key. Did I not have that saved somewhere? Oh, you know what we do? We, we already brought him in. So I'm going to go back here. We go ahead and delete these rings. And we can go. he already has a polygroup on here. So I'm going to go, we can hit reconstruct. I'll just reconstruct it. Uh, we could also could have undone. And I'm going to take all of these polygroups for his head here. Kind of the easiest way to grab these. I guess control shift and click will get us all these mouth bags, uppers and lowers and all this crazy stuff. So we're just going to borrow this head here. There we go. And then I'm going to do a quick uh, delete hidden. And I suppose we could close this hole at the bottom here. So we're going to hover over this edge and we'll go to close convex hole. And we'll delete higher. We don't need those subdivisions anymore. And we want to pull this out. We can hold down control shift, isolate this. And then we can mask, alt tap, and then again control out, pull out a ring here. Kind of transpose modeling with the gizmo. Now we've got that. Uh, we can go ahead and append that to our smirky here. So we'll go ahead and append that head, go to solo mode or transparency and be like, where did that head go? Let's go ahead and have that head selected and we'll go down here to our deformation. We'll hit unify. There he is. And now I can go ahead and scale this down and position him so that he's, you know, vaguely where a, a head would be. So on uh, this helmet right here, 
it looks like. Let me go ahead and load him up as well. There's a couple of more programs I need to install, but we'll we'll make do. Uh, okay, so we've got a head in here, and on the helmet, it looks like this is all just helmet stuff, except for he's got kind of a Judge Dredd kind of face in here. So I'm going to take my mask pin, and we'll just kind of mask this around where I want it cut out. And then we'll hit, uh, we have polyframe here, we'll hit Control w So now we've got uh, this piece here, and then this piece here, we'll hit Control w on that one as well. Uh, if we want to go ahead and get rid of the mouthpiece, we can go ahead and hit uh, Delete Hidden. And then the rest of the stuff, we can just kind of start slicing up if we want to kind of play around with that. So I'm going to turn off Line for our polyframe. And then I'm going to go to the side, and we're going to do a slice. And let's say we want to kind of, we're going to tap Alt a couple times. If you do Alt twice, that'll give you a sharp uh, crease. If you tap Alt once, that'll give you a nice soft crease here. If you want to do it on both sides, just do a quick mirror, mirror and weld, or just a mirror and weld if you're working from one side. Um, you can also isolate one of these, and you can just slice through like so. And let's say this is kind of what we want to play with. Oh, and also at the very bottom here, I suppose we could just slice this whole thing out. So I'm going to hold down Control shift tap twice, and then tap once. So we're going to get a sharp and then a soft fall off here. Now this bottom piece here I don't really need. So we'll go ahead and... If you ever have pieces like this, what you can do is go into poly groups and then do an auto groups and then do a quick mirror and weld to make that all the same. And then all these bottom pieces here, we can just isolate them. And then we can delete them. So we've got all these pieces here. And we can go ahead and split these out. And we can also even do a little bit of panel loops. So there's a, in that downloads page we were talking about earlier, there's also a panel loop presets here. So if you go in here, I think it's Chi Vang and Joseph Dress created this thing. So you can go in here to your panel loop presets and kind of dial in uh, panel loops with presets. But in this case, I'm just going to do my own. So the geometry, um, edge loop, panel loops. Let's go ahead and reset this curve here. Polish down. Thickness is fine. We want to do double, maybe four loops. It inherited those panel loops properties when we undid. We'll do elevation of zero bevel up a little bit and I think because uh, there's the midline of our bevel here we'll go ahead and crank this back up and now if we hit panel loops here let's turn off our poly paint and we'll knock this back so we're gonna knock this back a little bit let's go ahead and undo and we'll put in a few more dots and we'll bevel this up let's make these sharp so I'm gonna pull off and then back on to make those sharp transitions. And then we'll hit panel loops. There we go. So that's just going to give us um, some panels that we can kind of play around with and kind of start dragging some alphas on there and trying to get some ideas. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Let's make our thickness a little bit more. And let's drop that elevation down a little bit. There we go. Something like this. And then all this stuff we can kind of uh, play around with. So I think that'll work fine. Uh, if we turn off the poly paint here, we can kind of see what we're working with a little bit better. You can also go in here to polish by features. And those features are going to be these different poly groups here. So if you want to polish those surfaces out a little bit, um, you can go polish by features, close circle, and that'll keep your, maintain your volumes. If you turn to open circle, that'll just really polish your object out. So you can kind of play around with that. Uh, these are also separate objects here. So if we go into Move Brush, and we go to Modifiers, no, Auto Masking. You can turn on Topological, and it'll change that range down to like 1.5. And um, so this one you can use, you can move these things topologically. So if these aren't vert welded, it's just going to move whatever you click first. If you, so if you make your brush size big, you can kind of pull out pieces. If you make your brush size super small and you use this, you can actually move these individual pieces around um, just using move topological. So you can kind of play around with this a little bit. And that's why polygroups is off. So that way we can kind of pull in and then kind of pull out these little features here really quickly. You can also like do mask by poly group up to 100 if you want to play around just the poly group. So you're, on each one of these you're going to have an inside group um, and then if you do control shift x to expand 
all the four loops we put in there and then an inside group here so you're going to see here's all our inside pieces and then you can do control shift x to expand one two three four and if we invert that here's all your shells you can kind of see so um there's all those different techniques to kind of isolate some of these things if you want to split them into their own groups what i would do is do a quick mirror and well just in case that's under geometry modified topology and we'll do mirrored weld across the X. And then I would go down here to split to similar parts. And then I'll go ahead and split these back up into their own one, two, three, four. If we go to solo mode here, you can see we can alt tap through these things now and kind of play with those. So um, our head here, let's kind of scale him up just a little bit. We'll go into transparency. We'll go ahead and go to his mesh mesh center. We'll turn off X. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that's fine. Scale him up a bit. And then for this piece here, we know this needs to kind of be a little bit more flush with his little Robocop face here. And we can also go into move Accu and kind of pull these things down to points here. And we've gone over that in previous channels here. So if you use the uh, move Accu underneath the curves, here, if you turn on, if you use your move brush and you turn on Accu Curve, I have a hotkey for that. You can go through here, and you can you can pull out to corners as opposed to just pulling out to kind of a blobby angle there. Uh, if you want to, also, let's go into solo mode here. I'm going to take these uh, interior polygroups here, and we can kind of look at these. Uh, you could go through here and you could slice a new one, but since these are pretty pretty nice, I'm just going to go through here and say, you know what? Let's go ahead and crease edge loop partial and I'm just going to kind of crease where I want these corners to go so here 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 and here and now when I do polish by features uh, that crease is a feature so not only are polygroups features but creases are features if I want to I can also hit control W make these all in polygroup now when I do polish by features it'll go ahead and polish out to hard edges there so that way they kind of go to corners as well. And this is just a dynamesh stuff. You can Z-remesh that stuff if you want to, but I'm just in the concepting phase. I don't care too much about that at the moment. So we're just gonna kind of dial in this kind of look for our character here. And then this dome head, I don't know, we'll smooth that out a little bit. And like I said before, this is still just super, super duper loose. So I'm just gonna go through here and we'll kind of flare this bottom out a little bit. And it looks like we need a little bit more space inside of his neck here. He's, he can't really turn his head. So we do have a polygroup here. If I hit W and control tap this one, I can just hold down control and bring this in like an edge ring. We can just dynamesh that. And then since this is just dynamesh, we can go in there and smooth this. We can hit control W and make that all one polygroup. And we can also go through here and just carve this out with our clay brush here. There we go. A little bit more room to kind of wiggle around in there. Um, for this stuff, let's go ahead and go into my comma key, brush, and I've converted a bunch of alphas to multi-alpha brushes. We've, we've gone over that in previous episodes too, where if I go over here to, where did I hide those things? HS, I would imagine. Oh, you know what? Did I not copy them over? Give me a second here. Oh, I had to have. Let's put that. Give me a second here. Do do do. Um. Hmm. Maybe I didn't. Uh. Well, I suppose we could do. Uh, I suppose we could just do it manually. So let me see what I've got in my alphas here. We can walk through that a little bit. Industrial nature, we don't have anything. Oh man, um, I could have sworn. What a pain. All right, you know what I'm gonna do? Just to make this not quite so painful, I'm gonna copy these things over. So I'm gonna go to function, turn that off. Give me a second here, I'm gonna copy some stuff over. So, cool thing is I can just throw these on my server really quickly 
Let me go into my folder here on ZBrush for R8. And we're going to Z brushes. And we do have our hard surface brushes there. So I'm going to throw these right onto the server and we're just going to copy those over. Now, I don't know if my backbone at the house is gigabit. I don't think it is, uh, but it's only take a second. And I'll walk you through the process while that's while that's heading up. Basically, all I did was, for example, if you want to go in here and you hit the comma key and you go to brush, uh, no, not the comma key, you hit B for brush. You can go through here and you're going to see there's, for example, this, um, let's see, brush, chisel rect. Under chisel rect, you're going to see a bunch of objects in here and they're all being converted to alphas on the fly. Um, that's way better than having to go in here to like, in the old days in Zebra 4 7 you can go in here to alpha and you would like double click these things. Like, I don't want this alpha to be in here. So you double click this alpha. And it throws it over here, and then you can drag this one on. But if you want to change it, let's go ahead and drop that intensity down. So if you want to change it, uh, you have to go back into your alphas and grab another one, or go into this alpha menu here and choose another one. So instead of doing that, now what you can do is just cycle through a bunch of different objects, and that'll just change it on the fly. So you can go through here. I was like, oh, I want that one. Uh, but these alphas in here, I don't necessarily want. So what I did was um, take a bunch of my hard surface alphas and convert them to geometry. And this is done. So let me go ahead and bring these over. Transfer hard surface download. There we go. Okay, so if we go to my downloads here, and I'll just do this on this here. You can kind of see what I'm doing. So if we go to ZBrush 4R8, uh, Program Files, Pixel Logic ZBrush 4R8, we're going to go to ZBrushes, and I don't have a hard surface folder in here. So what I'm going to do is right click this one, and we're going to say 7-zip extract here. And now we have a hard surface folder with a bunch of hard surface uh, brushes in here. So now if I hit the comma key, brush each uh, hard surface. Now we have our hard surface brushes loaded in and I can go to uh, like our base shapes here. And now I can just cycle through a bunch of these. And as I'm cycling through these pieces of geometry, I'm mod I'm going and selecting uh, these things. So I have a bunch of these in here from Gumroad, HS2 vents. Yeah, let's just do HS vents. So we can load in a couple of brushes for hard surface stuff. And now when we go through here, we can also, instead of cycling through here, what I like to do also is hit M, and that'll bring up this menu, and now I can go through here, and I can start dragging out. Let's go ahead and drop that Z intensity down. And now we can start playing around with, you know, how these things are going to interact with each other, and maybe kind of just looking for kind of happy accidents a little bit here. So I'm going to hit M again, and go to a little bit thinner, and then kind of drag these things out, kind of make these things fit in here a little bit maybe. Go to the side. And there's like a rounded one on this side, so we can maybe try. Let's also go back to our other one, hold it B, and we'll drop that intensity down. So if you go to other episodes, you're going to see basically what I did it was just, you know, the conversion process. It's a pretty simple process, but basically alpha to 3D. Let's go through here and kind of play around with this. And if you want to just completely delete one, you can just go ahead and delete and now you've got uh, these pieces here and then if you want to go ahead and maybe like drop in a sphere and then go ahead and split mass points and then just immediately we inherited the DynaMesh properties so you can just DynaMesh this thing right back and then you can just go through here and if you want to you can also do like a, maybe a bend arc and we can say I want to bend this thing this way I'm going to solo mode here 
I'm gonna do it. Oh, I want this one. You can kind of bend this thing around a little bit and say, okay, that's about what I was looking for. And again, if you go through here with the move ACQ, that'll go ahead and pull out the points here. And then you can go through here with your insert brush and just start filling these things in and using trim dynamic and H polish and all that stuff. So we'll go here. Uh, and then while you're working, if this uh, is working out for you, but you don't necessarily want to keep that, you want to have a little bit more freedom with DynaMesh, I would go with here. If we DynaMesh this now, um, it's going to be fairly low res. If you want to keep a little bit more resolution, just jump, bump that resolution up just a bit. And your DynaMesh stuff is under Geometry DynaMesh. So you can go ahead and kind of play around with this a little bit. Let's go back into our brushes here. And we'll play around with these little side ones here. You can kind of see his head poking through. So if you want to stay honest and, you know, say this guy isn't lobotomized or have missing parts of his skull, you're going to want to go through and make sure that, you know, these things are somewhat regulated to his face and his nose and stuff just to kind of make sure that you're not cheating too much. But on some areas, like when you're doing the Batman cowl, uh, it's worth kind of cheating in the ear area a little bit, like really mash those those ears up just a bit. Let's go ahead and raise that resolution just a tiny bit here. You can also go in with your Damien standard brush and start indicating like maybe where you might want to maybe cut some panel lines in. And also with your clip brush here, let's go into our clip. And let's kind of like clip this thing back. Kind of looking for some interesting shapes. And clip is going to do it on both sides. It's not like slice. So with this one, you can kind of start dialing in. Some transitions here. If you want to smooth this out, we can go into our H polish here. You just hold down Alt and we can polish out and up and down. Like so. Go into our trim dynamic. Go back into our uh, Damien standard here. And it looked like there was kind of a skull on one side here. Yeah, kind of like a little emblem up here. So we can kind of start indicating this. And of course, I can always break this out into another piece eventually. But while we're just kind of playing around, we can just hold down Alt and just kind of build out a little emblem here. We'll go ahead and increase that resolution just a tiny bit too. Now, if you're doing creature stuff, I would tend to keep my resolution really low and have project turned on for DynaMesh. Uh, but while we're doing hard service stuff, I'm not, I would, I tend to work a little bit more projection turned off and uh, just my resolution up a little bit. And again, nothing too detailed, but just kind of playing around with how these things might look. We've got kind of a shell head here. Standard brush, intensity, RGB got turned on only. And again, go in here with H polish if you want to kind of dial some of these things in. And then smooth. And we can always refine these as needed later. Let's go ahead and widen this out. I kind of like the look on the original one where these are a little bit wider. And if we kind of want to give him a little bit of a smile in here, which is, is what he has on the concept, he's kind of got a weirdo a smile. We can kind of dial that in just a little bit here. And of course, 
you know, in here, that's kind of a very fake smile. You're going to want to kind of, you know, bulge out the cheeks. And this isn't going to go up. It's going to go back. And um, when you smile, your nose is going to kind of go up a little bit. And we can kind of go in here and just kind of curve this back a little bit here. So we can kind of add a little bit more uh, detail to kind of flesh this out. But I would use uh, like a little compact mirror you can have next to your desk to kind of make this look a little bit more natural. It looks kind of weird. But since he's just kind of a placeholder in here, I think that'll work fine. Ooh, move brush, please. There we go. And we also have topological turned on, it looks like. Yeah. So we can go ahead and turn that off. We want to move both lips at the same time. Of course, topological is nice, as you can see, uh, for not moving both lips at the same time. Let's go ahead and get a little bit more draft here. Looks like Alec Baldwin from that, that angle. There we go. Okay. And let's see here. And we'll take this one here. We'll just crank that resolution up and then dynamesh this. And then this this one here, if you want to, we can like mask this here. And then we can all tap this one. And we can kind of scoot this thing up. And then again, we can go through here and we can clip these things as needed. Just kind of lower, go back into our hard surface brushes here. And kind of just dial these things in. Now on this one, as you're going to see, we're kind of dealing with thinner meshes here. So as I'm pulling through, it's pulling through the other side. If you don't want that to happen, go over here to your auto masking and turn on back face. And you can kind of just bend this in or out. Turn off RGB here and let's make sure all of our. There we go. So I can go back in here at Damien Standard if we want to kind of explore uh, this a little bit more. We can go in here with our H polish. You can go, like, okay, I, I want a soft fall off up front, maybe a little bit of a harder fall off on the back. And again, I'm not worried about refining too much. I'm just trying to decide if this is something I want to continue with. And then we can go in here with our Damien standard and kind of punch this in. So we can kind of have that kind of profile from the side here, maybe. We'll kind of lift this up just a little bit with our move brush. Um, so most random nerd says, hey, that's fitting since I do hard surface armor right now myself. So I made a couple of pieces using panel loops. You can quickly remind me if I can divide only the visible polygroups and not unnecessary ones facing the body. Um, you can do a local subdivision on that. It will basically, if you if you have no subdivision history and you make sure I'm not lying to you here. So if you have no subdivision history and you have just a piece of a visible and you hit control D, that'll go ahead and locally subdivide. So if you have your interior spaces not visible and you subdivide those up, you can do that. It'll do something like that on the transition edge. Um, so that's something you can do. Uh, but usually when I'm doing panel loops, I'm trying to think of the most elegant way. I mean, if you don't need interior faces, Sometimes what I'll do, and I do this on shirts too, if I go back to, um, like let's say I want to make a shirt for this guy. Hold down control, go to mask lasso. I can go ahead and like, okay, you put a shirt on this here, guy here. Let's go ahead and duplicate him off at control W. Isolate this, delete hidden. Um, We'll go ahead and Z remesh this thing to half. We're making a shirt. We're making a shirt. We're making a shirt. And I'm just going to dial this way down. So uh, instead of going through here and doing like Q mesh polygroup all and giving it thickness, if you can and it makes sense, just instead go through here and do like a closed convex hole. Oops. And just cap as opposed to giving thickness. So that way, 
I mean, if you're doing panel loops and stuff, you might not, there might not be a way around, especially if you're doing armor stuff. But if you can, you can also go through here and do like crease polygroup. And then when I go out of solo mode, and I do Q mesh polygroup ball, I can just hold down shift and pull across that surface normal. And now I've got a shirt that has, I don't have to worry about a bunch of inside faces taking up a whole lot of my memory or performance and or sculpting through and making sure I have back face on for all my brushes. Uh, I can just go through here and just start sculpting on my brush and not have to worry about that as much. And as I control subdivide through, I have uh, crease polygroups turned on. So I know that on my creases, uh, of course, you're probably going to want to have X turned off if you're going down the middle here. And let's also go in here and hit L, turn on lazy radius. So that way, um, as I'm kind of sculpting in the cloth and stuff, I don't have to worry about those inside faces because there are none. So that saves me uh, quite a bit of geometry and stuff. And then that way, you can turn X back on. We can kind of start fleshing out this a little bit more. And then Control D as we subdivide. And then go in here and figure out how I want this cloth to kind of lay in here. So cap if you can on your panel loops. If you don't care about it, if you're never going to see the interior surfaces, there's no reason to have them. Um, f see if you can like maybe cap them as opposed to uh, just doing thickness. Might be an option for you. And for the rest of his body too, we can kind of play around with, we, we kind of dialed in, if we do this here, opacity, we kind of dialed in these shapes. So, uh, you know, if I want to kind of keep these shapes, I can keep my panel loops um, following these kind of guidelines, or I can just go through here and split these pieces off. We've done a, we've done a f our fair bit of hard surface modeling in the past in the previous episodes, where we kind of go through and just kind of refine and break apart and refine and break apart. And then you can also do like the panel loop stuff and the alphas to kind of find some interesting uh, ideas there. Uh, also, if you go back to, give me a second here. We did a, I bring this up a bit too, but it is interesting to me. If you go to my playlist here, we do the uh, ZBrush guides uh, stylized rendering, we basically go through the ZBrushGuys.com PDF, and that allows us to kind of play around with. Uh, we, we played a lot with the uh, the internal. So we remember when we did the, earlier in this episode, we did the key shot tune renderer. If you go in here to material, let's go ahead and drop out of this one. I'm going to take a material I don't want, like gold. Oh, well, gold's pretty super cool. Uh, let's say we don't need gold. I'm going to go over here to my comma key, and these ones I'm pretty sure I copied over. Ah, did I not? I am, I must be going insane. I swore I copied all this crap over. And I guess I didn't. Man. Um, that can't be right. I refuse to believe it. Uh, uh, you know, new machine, set up woes. Uh, I won't bother bringing them over right now. But one thing you can do is, um, you know, how we can even start with outline. So you can start with, um, you know, material like this. And we'll go over here to the material properties. And we'll go to modifiers here. So you're going to see, uh, you can bring in, and this the, the, the setup guide will walk you through all of these properties here. But uh, you can go through here and get kind of cool stylized looks like this, just kind of dialing in uh, your intensities and your depths for this. And you can also bring in your own texture. So if I switch this over to like the ZBrush texture or jelly beans, there we're basically utilizing this texture here to um, shade our object here. It's kind of got built in lighting. So why this looks like green metallic is because the shader ball is telling it how to render in real time. Uh, same thing with Madcap Gray, same thing with Madcap Red Wax. You're going to have on this one, you have two shader balls. You've got an A and a B, and those two playing together over here with these parameters to give you the look of Madcap Red Wax. So anyway, you can kind of play around with that if you wanted to. And I cause, again, I could have sworn I brought all this stuff over, and I guess I didn't. <sighs> okay, so here's Outline Thin. Kind of dial these in a little bit. Let's see if we can go to Let's 
So you see as I'm changing these depths, I'm, I'm modifying the actual look of this thing. So if I want to go like thinner outer ring or thicker outer ring, let's do intensity A up and then depth A. So you can swap these around. A red outline. C cavity detection. I don't know. Play with that stuff. But let's go back to MatCap Gray here. And we'll keep uh, dialing with this. Uh, if you have an open mouth because the guy or mannequin is yelling, how would you make the teeth? Oh, I got a. I got a good one for you. So in, <laughs> if you go to this Pavlovich workshop here on episode 24, you're going to see a really good looking fish with a bunch of human teeth in it. Uh, that'll kind of walk you through. But the teeth process is fairly simple. So if we have a guy like this and his mouth is open, so let's go all the way back to the beginning here. And he does actually have under his layers here. He has a mouth open, so I'm going to open that up and then we'll go ahead and hit bake all. So it's like, okay, he's got an open mouth, but how do we make teeth? I would start with a cylinder here and we'll go ahead and split mass points and we'll go ahead and rotate this around. So this will be where my teeth start and of course we're going to do upper and lower teeth. So I don't need that whole cylinder. So I can just go through here. Let's go ahead and just dynamesh this thing. It'll be easier to work with. So we'll just dynamesh this down to a resolution. There we go. And we can just go ahead and clip this thing back. So this will be my upper teeth here. And we'll go ahead and rotate this around a little bit, a little bit more natural. So your lower jaw rotates down. Your upper jaw just kind of stays the same. So it's not going to really rotate the teeth down or anything. So you can kind of just dial in. Um, this kind of look here. So now we know we don't need those back faces. So we can go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and crank that resolution up even more. All right, so we've got our basic shape here, and we'll go ahead and clip this back. So there's our basic teeth shape. And you might be saying, like, well, I don't want to make, like, crappy sculpted teeth. I want to make, like, really nice high-resolution teeth. And that's fine. I always start quick and crappy because this allows me to kind of dictate, ensure that where I'm putting these things is where they need to go before I spend a lot of time kind of dialing in a bunch of unnecessary work that's not going to work because I did it wrong to start with. So if we pull these back here and now we know like teeth are going to go from thick to thin and we'll go in here with H polish here and then if you want you know you go in here and start dividing these things up so let's go ahead and turn L off so you can go through here and be like okay here's my front teeth side teeth here then my canines here if we want to we can go in here to like snake hook or move accu and kind of pull these ones down of course we don't need vampire teeth but just kind of giving an indication of those will go down here and then these ones go back here and then maybe one more and then as they get bigger these ones are going to go like this, and then these ones are going to be thinner, so I'm going to go in here with H polish. We can just polish these down a bit. And you can go in here with your pinch brush and kind of pinch these together. And you can always swap these out later with real teeth, which is what we did in the fish. But again, we're just kind of dialing in where we want our teeth to go, uh, how we want our gums to work, so you know your gums are going to be like thicker here. Oh wait, no, they're going to be thicker, yeah, over the tooth, I believe. I'm just kind of vaguely remembering how gums work. So something like this. So this is the basic idea of our teeth here. And let's go ahead and round these teeth out just a little bit here. So we can go ahead and um, give a little dimension to these teeth. So this would be my teeth block out. Um, and we'll go ahead and straighten this out here. So let's say these are my upper teeth, and man, this guy's mouth got really thin here. I think that's a little bit more natural. Okay, so we've got these teeth here. Uh, 
I'm going to move these back here. Now, if I want to do lower teeth, I can just duplicate these things off. And I can flip them. I can do a mirror in the Y direction. Let's go ahead and go into solo mode here. We'll do another mirror. There we go. Go ahead and move these up. Reset. Now, lower teeth are going to be different than upper teeth, obviously. So you'd want to go in here and modify these teeth to be, you know, however they should look. And these will probably be more pinched in here, a little smaller. And let's go through here and redraw where you want your teeth to go. Um, if you wanted to wait until you had your upper teeth done to get a little bit more of a refined teeth that you can change, you can do that too. Then the refined process for the teeth here is just going to be basically... You can do this any number of ways. I'm, I would maybe be inclined to do like a cube that I would just drop in here and then split mass points. And let's just look at these two here. And then I would just move these things out and back. Let's turn on LSIM. There we go. And now I can just start dialing in the shape of the teeth. So it's going to go thin on the top, thick on the bottom. So let's go ahead and do a quick insert, single edge loop here, and then mask, hold down Alt, and then I can just pull these things up. And we'll go ahead and make these curved a little bit. So we'll go ahead and pull these out just a bit. And let's give ourselves a little bit more information here. So we'll insert multiple edge loops. We'll do same polygroup. So it doesn't give us the clown carnival look with our polygroups here. We'll kind of bolt those out. So if we hit D, that's going to give us our dynamic preview. Um, if we want to, we can crease, you know, go in here and kind of crease these things down and do our whole like crease level of one, smooth subject of two, and that'll just kind of maintain our edges a little bit more. But in this case, probably I don't need any of that. So do smooth subject of three here. And then I can just build in control loops if I want to kind of do like an insert single edge loop. We can tighten up this bottom a little bit. And we can even go through here and kind of pinch these down so they get a little bit thinner towards the bottom and then thicker towards the top. However, you want to do that. And then dial these back in. You can hit W, Control, pop off a copy, rotate these back push them in and just basically get your teeth shape in there. So you're basically replacing your sculpted teeth with something a little bit more representative. I'm not using reference or anything. So use some reference on your teeth so that they look right as far as their shapes go and stuff like that. But these will just give you a little bit of a nicer render. And you can also go through here and you can like inflate these things together if you want to. And also, you know, I think like how far and we still, these are just dynamic preview, so if I hit D and Shift D, you're going to see the actual geometry that we're carrying around. Um, and then this will give you a little bit more leeway to kind of put in the gums. So if we go into solo mode here, and we can just go through here, and we, like, we don't need any of these teeth anymore. Let's clip those back, and now we have a gums mesh. If you want a nicer gums mesh, let's go ahead and smooth these down here. You can go through here, and you can just use DynaMesh and you know increase the resolution as needed as you're kind of dialing in this here. So you can kind of like put in divots here and then go through with your clay brush or clay buildup or your standard brush and be like, okay, gums, I'm gonna do this number. And if you want nicer geometry, it's just a matter of Z remeshing, projecting, all that good stuff. So you'll let, let's go ahead and rotate these back and stuff these up in there. And then use our just our sculpting tool to kind of make these fit in there a little bit better. So however, however teeth look, I don't really remember, but something like that is how I'd go uh, putting that in there. Not good on time. All right, we're about ready to wrap up. So we've done a little bit of hard surface modeling, done a little bit of hard surface concepting, we've done a little bit of teeth stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and call it a day. My brain is gone. Long Labor Day weekend. But um, 
I'm not, okay, so yeah, just to reiterate, I am not going to be here next Tuesday or the Tuesday after, so I think September 26th, I'll be back on this channel, and on my channel, I'm on Thursday, so I'll be back September 29th. So just in case, you guys can check that out. Sorry I'm so low energy today, but man, I'm just, I'm, ugh. I'm not feeling it this morning. My brain does not want to wake up. Thanks for showing up, everybody, and I will see you in a couple of weeks.